So in the previous lectures, we saw about linear systems, the stability, controllability, absolutely design of controllers and design of observers. Um, in the system is said to be linear if the input output relationship satisfies the linearity uh, property. If the linearity property is not satisfied, then system is said to be a non-linear system. Okay. In fact, uh, uh, most of the systems that are modeled as linear systems are because of the range of operation or the region of operation uh, or the operating conditions to which they are subjected to. Okay, due to which uh, I mean under which they are basically linear. For example, consider uh, the spring mass damper system, uh, whose equation is uh, or the dynamic equation is given by my double dot plus by dot plus ky is equal to f, where m is the mass of the um, the mass that is connected to the spring, k is the spring constant as we know, and b is the damping coefficient. Okay, now the factor k that you see here remains constant over a certain range of elongation or compression of this particular spring about its rest position. Okay, if you stretch the spring beyond a certain uh, range, then the uh, factor k may very well change, and it might so happen beyond it might so happen that beyond this range. K might start depending on the uh, amount of elongation that the spring has undergone and hence the model that you see which was linear will be now represented as my double dot plus by dot plus k being a function of y multiplied with y which is equal to the force that is being applied okay now the y here is actually uh, the displacement of the mass and hence representing the elongation of the spring from the rest position okay so this otherwise a linear model when it is outside a certain range of operation can behave as a non-linear system okay so this is the non-linear model possible possibly non-linear model of a spring mass damper system Similarly, consider a RL series RLC circuit which is being subjected to a varying voltage source. So, this is the describe this is the equation or the dynamic equation that describes the relationship between the voltage applied, the current flowing in the circuit, and the resistance inductor and capacitance present in the circuit. So, as you see, this is also a linear system, provided the current flowing in the circuit is within range so that the resistor does not heat up. If the current is beyond a certain range, then what will happen is the resistor will heat up fast and due to this heating up, the resistance value will change. Okay. So, the resistance here now becomes a function of current. Okay. In fact, if you run a circuit for a long time, then it might so happen that the resistance heats up over a longer period of operation as the resistance changes. So, resistance becomes a function of time and current and hence, what you will end up with is the otherwise uh, linear system would now behave as would now be modeled as a non-linear system. So depending on the period of operation, the range of operation, uh, otherwise looking linear system may become a uh, may be modeled as a uh, non-linear system. Okay. So in the coming up few lectures and in this lecture, we will focus our attention on continuous time nonlinear systems and we'll see how the stability of these systems can be analyzed um, and can we use the ideas of linear systems to uh, the nonlinear system domain okay so all systems in general can be a model in the form of the are represented as states in the state space dependence as shown here which is x dot equal to a function of the state vector itself the input u and the output uh, and the time t okay and the output vector y would be again a function of the state vector x input u and output t okay the initial condition is x0 uh, x of t being the state vector at any time instant t is in rn yt is the output vector and u 
is an admissible control input. The F and H are basically uh, mapping from the domain of the states, the set of admissible inputs and the time interval to Rn and or Rp respectively. Okay, so F and H are considered to be continuous with respect to X and D is a subset of Rn. Okay, U is a set of admissible inputs as I said. Now for unforced systems, there is no external input and the system evolves with respect to its initial condition. Okay, so the uh, so you can see that the input U is absent in the equations for, in the functions of uh, the state vector evolution and the output vector. Okay, now due to explicit dependence on time, such systems are known as non-autonomous systems. If there is no explicit dependence on time, then these uh, four systems would be autonomous systems. Why autonomous? Because they evolve solely under the uh, influence of the initial condition and are not dependent on uh, at what time those initial conditions have appeared. Okay, now note that the input u that you have can either be a function of t or a function of state or a function of output which is in turn a function of state and time. Okay, so in most representations you would find this generalized representation to be either in the form of x dot equal to f of x, y equal to h of x which is basically the autonomous system or x dot equal to f of tx and y of equal to h of tx which is for the non-autonomous system. So the u gets absorbed in terms of x and t. Okay, we will focus our discussion for this nonlinear systems part mostly to autonomous, uh, unforced autonomous uh, systems. But before we go into those, uh, let us see some properties that certain nonlinear systems might possess, but linear systems, none of the linear systems will ever possess. One of them is the existence of multiple isolated equilibrium points. So before we go into the multiple isolated equilibrium points, let us see what equilibrium points essentially are. Okay. So consider the uh, non-autonomous system zone or the autonomous system zone. Okay. Uh, X star, which is in the domain D, is said to be the equilibrium point of the system if X dot is equal to 0 at x equal to x star, which basically means x dot is nothing but f of x or f of tx, f of x for autonomous systems, f of tx for not autonomous systems, okay. So if for autonomous system f of x is 0 at x equal to x star, then it is a equilibrium, which is said to be equilibrium point, x star is said to be the equilibrium point. Similarly for non-autonomous system, if f of tx is equal to 0 at x equal to x star for all t greater than equal to 0, then x star is the equilibrium point for the non-autonomous system. Now, if you see what is happening here is x dot remains 0, which means that there are no changes that are happening to the state vector x. So, it's, if it starts at x star, so if the initial uh, state condition x t 0 is equal to x star, then x of t will remain as x star for all t greater than equal to 0, whether it is autonomous or a non-autonomous system. Okay, So, essentially it can be seen as the internal forces are essentially in balance Okay, due to which there is no change that is being seen in the system. The system will continue to be in a state in which it was at the beginning of the observation. Okay. So, uh, for example, now let us take this uh, autonomous system where x dot is equal to x square minus x1 square minus 1, x2 square minus 1. So, I am taking a second order system uh, which has two states x1 and x2 which are collected into the state vector x. So, x1 dot is x1 square minus 1, x2 dot is x2 square minus 2. So, this is what we have. Okay, so the equilibrium points that we have for this particular nonlinear system, there are four of them. Uh, they are as shown, which is 1 root 2, 1 minus root 2, minus 1 root 2, and minus 1 minus root 2. Now consider the linear system as shown here. 
which is x dot is equal to 0 1 0 0 multiplied by x1 x2 then the equilibrium point is a collection of all those points where x2 is equal to 0 okay now we'll use these two examples to see what isolated equilibrium points actually mean so coming back to the non-linear system that we had in hand we'll see what isolated equilibrium points are so for this let us pick up equilibrium point from the four equilibrium points that you have just found out uh, let us pick up one root two as the equilibrium point of interest okay so define a neighborhood of this particular point uh, as shown here so b epsilon is the neighborhood of the point one root two so what essentially it means is it is a collection of all those points which have a distance less than or equal to epsilon from the point one root two okay epsilon is a finite positive uh, constant okay now if you are able to find a finite positive constant epsilon such that this b epsilon set has no other uh, point which can serve as the equilibrium point for the given system except for the point 1 root 2 then 1 root 2 will become will be classified as a isolated equilibrium point because there is no one in its vicinity there is at least some uh, neighborhood in which there is no other equilibrium point other than 1 root 2 so i 1 root 2 is kind of a isolated equilibrium point now this argument holds for the remaining three equilibrium points for this particular nonlinear system as well okay so what you see here is in this case the nonlinear system has multiple isolated equilibrium point now consider the system x dot equal to 0 1 0 0 x t that we had taken and the set of equilibrium point was all those points where x2 is equal to 0. Now in this case if you pick up any equilibrium point of interest from this particular set and try to form a neighborhood you will see that you cannot find a finite uh, positive value of epsilon for which uh, you will be able to say that there is no other equilibrium point other than the one taken okay you will not be able to actually establish this for this linear system okay in fact what you see is you have a continuous set of uh, you have a set of equilibrium points which are continuous okay so this is a continuum of equilibria that you have for this uh, linear system so in case of linear systems you will either have one unique equilibrium point or a continuum of equilibria okay multiple equilibrium point if exist for linear systems cannot be isolated okay they will always be in a continuum of equilibria okay so multiple isolated equilibrium points exist only for non-linear systems if they exist for the non-linear system under consideration but but they will never exist for a linear system the next interesting property that a uh, nonlinear system may possess, but the linear system will definitely not possess, is finite escape time. Okay, now what is escape? Escape essentially means if the magnitude of x becomes infinity, then it is said that the trajectory has escaped. Okay, so consider the nonlinear system here, which is x dot equal to x square, and if you initialize at t equal to 0 to 1 then the solution turns out that x of t is equal to 1 by 1 minus t and you can see here as t approaches 1 the so norm of x t approaches infinity so x t basically escapes within a finite time which is in the time interval 0 to 1 okay as it approaches 1 it will definitely escape okay now such a behavior is not possible with linear systems why because linear system systems exhibit exponential behavior if the trajectory is to become unbounded then the magnitude will actually grow exponentially which essentially indicates as t approaches infinity norm of xt will become infinity norm of xt cannot become infinity within a finite time for linear systems okay so these are some things that through which you can distinguish a linear system from a non-linear system what i suggest is uh, you find out some other properties that 
these non-linear systems may possess but the linear systems will definitely not possess so we'll stop this lecture here thank you